Welcome to the Intermarket Analysis Update. This is for August 1st, 2022. The chart that you see in front of you is just a current valuation of the S&P 500. When we're above this red line, that means that we are expensive. This red line denotes a trailing 12 months reading of 20 or above. The yellow line is 15 and the green line is 10. When we're above the red line, stocks are considered to be expensive. When we're at the blue line, stocks are fairly priced. And when we're at or below the green line, stocks are considered inexpensive or cheap. This line down below just shows the distance between the current price of the S&P and the red PE ratio of 20. The next chart then shows historically how have stocks behaved when they're considered to be expensive, fairly priced, or inexpensive. And this goes up to the current time for the S&P. This next chart is the intermarket analysis chart showing that oil has been performing the best out of anything in 2022, followed by the dollar, which has seen some recent weakness, but is still holding up. The areas that are negative include gold and stocks, which are starting to show some improvement and bonds, which also could be starting to show some improvement. This chart shows the S&P 500 with those stocks that make up that index, how many of them are above their 50 period moving average. When we get extreme negative, that often marks a low in the S&P 500. We did mark that low and then we've been bouncing up ever since then. We compare that to the mid cap index and we saw the same thing where we see a recent dive to an extreme negative reading and then a bounce up following that as well as with small caps. So we're seeing some confirmation across many different indexes. This is the CRB index, which has been in a really solid uptrend pretty much since the COVID lows, but has been showing some recent weakness. In 2022, as the CRB has been going up, that has helped value stocks to do better and growth stocks to do worse because this tends to produce inflation. Lately, we've been seeing the CRB index showing some weakness, but recently it has been bouncing back a bit. We also look at corn, which really spiked up, came down and has rebounded slightly. Here we have aluminum, which spiked up, came down and has rebounded. Gas, which everybody feels when they go to the pump, really spiked up and has dropped significantly, but bounced up a little bit. Lumber, which had been in a really solid downtrend, bounced back up a bit in earlier in the summer and has now resumed a pretty significant downtrend. Here's copper, which we look at this to give us a barometer of the economy. When copper's going up, that generally means the economy is doing better. When copper is going down, that generally means the economy might experience weakness and it tends to lead the market. Well, copper has been in a pretty significant downtrend, but has bounced recently. Here's a ratio between copper and gold. Both have really struggled lately with copper going down and gold going down. Well, copper has rebounded a bit and gold has rebounded a bit, but copper is rebounding just a little bit more on a relative basis. This next chart is the same chart, this black line here. This green line is the two-year yield on the treasury. And normally, the green line and the blue line don't get all that far apart. And when they do, something ends up changing. Well, if you look at the green line and the black line here, they're very far apart right now. So does that mean interest rates are going to come down? Or is copper going to outperform gold on a relative basis? We have heating oil, which has really gone up, but has since fallen back a bit. Wheat spiked up and is coming down, but rebounded recently. Oil, which finally got under 100. It was down even under 95 for a while, but it's rebounded to 98.62. Natural gas, which has been spiking up and going down pretty radically. Looking at some stocks, these, this is the Intellidex Index which measures the biggest software companies. And they have been in a pretty solid downtrend. And this is growth oriented. The green, excuse me, the blue line is below the red line. So that's a downtrend. But we could be seeing a potential rebound beginning to happen as stocks start to show a bit of a rebound and are looking more positive. 
These are the mega cap growth stocks. These are the real big boys, Apple, Google, Microsoft. They've been in a pretty solid downtrend, but have been rebounding as of late. Here's the Dow, which has been coming back above its 50 period moving average and is now coming back up to a pivot level. So it's looking better. It's still in a downtrend overall, but it is showing a lot of improvement on an increase in volume. The mid caps are also showing some improvement as are the small caps. Here's the small cap ratio to the S&P 500. They've been doing better, but the last day or so last week, they didn't perform as well as the S&P 500. But we've just seen a recent golden cross here. So in a good, healthy environment, small caps will tend to do quite well. Here's the small cap index all by itself, where again, it got above the 50 period moving average. It's still in a downtrend overall, but is showing a lot of improvement. Uh, here's the ratio I just showed. Here's another ratio showing the small cap to the S&P 500. That is the red line here. When we see a little spike up in the small cap ratio, that can give some support to the S&P. And that's what we've been seeing. Earlier in the week last week, this red chart bounced up a little bit and spiked. And then after that, the blue chart, that's the S&P it has been showing some real strength as of late. Here's the NASDAQ, which is very growth oriented and it's showing a lot of improvement right now, as is the NASDAQ 100. Here is some more ratios showing how growth had really been underperforming in 2022. Well, now it's starting to come back, but it's still in a downtrend overall. Here's the NASDAQ 100, which is very growth oriented against the S&P 500. It's been in a downtrend and it's still in a downtrend. This is the 200 day moving average and then the 50 is below, but it is showing some improvement, but it hasn't changed trend yet. Low volatility stocks tend to do well when the market is really having some problems. We just saw a recent death cross, but even these stocks are starting to show a bit of a rebound. And here's a ratio between the low volatility stocks and the S&P where the low volatility, the low volatility stocks have really outperformed, but have shown some recent weakness on a relative basis. Here's the S&P 500 to the 10 year yield. As interest rates have been going up, the S&P has been going down, but we're seeing that reverse slightly, even though the downtrend still continues. Here's just a growth index all by itself, showing how growth has really been suffering and it's still in a downtrend, but starting to show some improvement. Here's value, which has also been in a downtrend and starting to pick up as well. Here's the S&P 500 to the two-year yield. When this gets really low, that means they have an inverse relationship. So if the S&P is going up, that generally means the two-year yield is going down and vice versa. Here's the S&P to the 10-year yield, also having a pretty strong inverse relationship. This is the two year treasury yield down below. And a lot of times when it spikes and then starts going down, that can mark a short to intermediate term bottom in the S&P 500. We did spike up recently and are coming down, but it's really hard to tell with this chart if this is going to continue or not. The S&P to the dollar also has an inverse relationship. If the dollar is going down, that generally means the S&P has been going up recently. So that's one thing that I watch heavily right now is the dollar index. You can also watch DXY, which is another dollar index as well. If it's going down, that generally gives some support to the stock market. And the inverse is also true. Here's the 10-year treasury yield to the tech sector, where the tech sector has really been, I'm sorry, underperforming as the 10-year yield has been outperforming but has now been seeing some weakness. And here also shows the stock to bond ratio where stocks have really outperformed bonds over the last few years and they're still continuing to do so, but we are starting to see some improvement in the bond market. Here's the growth, the growth stocks that really help the indexes go higher and the 20 year treasury bond itself, not the yield, but the bond price where they both have really suffered in 2022 well, growth is now starting to outperform bond prices. 
Here's growth versus value up on top, showing how growth is underperformed, but is showing a rebound. On the bottom, how value is outperformed, but is showing some weakness. Here's another look at that same measure. Growth has really underperformed, but is bouncing, where this is value has really been outperforming, but is showing continued weakness. Here's the energy sector, which has done really well in 2022, but recently it's shown some weakness, but starting to possibly bounce. Here's the staple sector. This is a more defensive play. These are the things that you have to have, no matter what's going on in the economy. We just saw a recent death cross, but prices are starting to rebound slightly. Here's the energy sector, which had been really strong in 2022 against the tech sector, which has been really weak. Well, energy had been really strong, but has since been falling back. Here's the tech sector all by itself. It's still in a downtrend, but showing some improvement. Here's the tech sector to the 10-year yield. As interest rates have been going up, tech has been going down, but is seeing a recent rebound. Here's the tech to the SPY, where tech has been underperforming the S&P 500, but is getting back up to its longer term moving average. Here's the staples ratio. And this is one of the more positive things that we're looking at right now. When you see a, spar a, a spike in this ratio between the staples and the SPY, that often marks a significant low in the S&P 500. Well, we've had three spikes at about the same level and now we're really starting to drop. Now this could change. But this time, we're starting to see a follow through in price with the S&P 500. So we want to keep an eye on this and see if this relationship maintains itself with the staples ratio actually dropping as the S&P 500 continues to go up. Here's the CRB index that measures inflation against the S&P 500. It's been in an uptrend, but is showing recent weakness. Here's the Dow Jones composite average, where you take the Dow, the transports, and the utilities and put them together. It has been in a downtrend, and it continues in a downtrend, but is starting to show some improvement. Here, are the, These are the FANG stocks, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, and they've even added a couple others where they're going to have to change the name at some point. This has been in an overall downtrend in 2022, but we're back above this moving average and are showing some improvement overall. Here's the S&P 500, which had done really well up until 2022. Actually, it started in 2020 after the COVID plunge, but it's been in a downtrend, but is starting to show some rebound. The US dollar, which is still in an overall uptrend on the daily chart, as stocks go up, we've been seeing some weakness in the dollar. Gold, which is in a pretty nasty downward move right now, lately has been rebounding. And the same with silver. It's been in a downtrend, but has been bouncing back. Here's the S&P 100, the biggest stocks that make up the S&P against the rest of the S&P. And it's doing okay. It's bounced up a little bit, but it's not as strong as what we would like to see. Discretionary, the things that make life fun, it's been in a real downtrend overall against staples but is starting to show some improvement. ARC, another really popular ETF, it's been in a really solid downtrend and is still struggling quite a bit, but at least it's above this 50 period moving average. So we're waiting to see, can it get some legs and start to move higher? High leverage loans. In a good environment, people are willing to take on more risky loans or assume them well, we've been in a downtrend overall, but we're starting to show some recovery. Staples, they've been really strong throughout 2022, but now are showing some weakness. Gold against the S&P, gold had been doing really well compared to the S&P, but now it's showing some weakness, but it's still in an overall uptrend. Here's gold against the dollar, where gold had been really suffering. That's when the ratio goes down. But lately, with the dollar going down, gold going up a bit, we're seeing a bit of a rebound in this ratio. Emerging markets, which invests mostly internationally, this is still in a pretty solid downtrend. Here is the Japanese yen, which has been really weak lately, and the euro, which has been weak against the dollar. Even though recently we're seeing a reverse of that, 
the overall trend has been in the dollar's favor. Semiconductors, which make up a large part of growth, they've been an overall downtrend, but look to be trying to rebound here. The Wilshire, which is a broad-based index, it's still in a downtrend, but was able to recapture the 50-period moving average and show some recovery. Here's bonds, the corporate bonds. They're still in a downtrend overall, but showing some improvement. Here's the bond to stock ratio, which had a recent golden cross, but really isn't breaking out much right now. Here's all bonds together in a big ETF. They're still in a downtrend, but starting to show a little bit of a rebound. Here's the world bond index, which is going down to the COVID lows, establishing a base and starting to show some recovery. Here's the tech sector to the 10 year yield and it shows that they're in an inverse relationship. So if tech is going up, chances are right now, this could always change, but right now the 10 year yield is going down. Then here are the different yields on the treasuries, which shows overall, even in a recession inflationary environment, the yields have been going down overall. Here internationally it shows how the US, UK and Germany their rates have really been falling, where Japan has pretty much been going flat. They're in a whole different situation right now, economically. Here's the 10-year yield, which really spiked up to about 3.5% and has really been coming down, dropping almost a percent since then. Junk bonds, they have been in a downtrend overall, but they tend to follow the stock market and have been showing a recovery. And here's the junk bond ratio to the bonds where junk bonds have been outperforming bonds. But if bonds can really get some strength, because junk bonds are riskier and a lot of folks would rather be in bonds. And if bonds start to outperform junk bonds, that would mean they could get into a larger yield without assuming as much risk. And then here's an international look. China has been in a downtrend where emerging markets are starting to turn. Europe is in an uptrend. Japan has been in an uptrend. And the US is also in an uptrend. So that concludes the charts that I have for right now. Please feel free to check out the daily and weekly videos that I also post. I hope you find this useful and I'll prepare the next video. It'll be the daily video after Monday's session.